Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is air. A-I-R. Rally. You'll bet your life. <laughs> Soto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Why doesn't that guy get lost? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's first to try and take it away from me? A pair of newlyweds, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Mr. and Mrs. Merton Bedford meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> and if you say the secret word at any time we're talking, you win $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Is that clear? Clear. Well, you're quite welcome. Now, uh, <laughs> you're newlyweds, eh? Uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Rose Bedford. How, how newly wet are you? Uh, uh, last Saturday. Mr. Bedford, you are the, you are the happy uh, groom? I am. I don't want to seem nosy, Mr. Bedford, but uh, approximately how old are you? Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Well, you don't look it. And uh, would it be asking too much, Mrs. Bedford, if I inquired as to your age? Oh, we're about the same age. <laughs> <laughs> we are? I don't believe it. Eh? <laughs> I'll call you Rose, huh? You don't care. You're married oh, now, and you're no. out of my clutches. Uh, <laughs> now, wh what sort of work do you do, uh, Mighton? I'm a carpenter. A carpenter? What kind of a carpenter? Huh? Finish carpenter? Well, I mean, you start, too, don't you? Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> you say a Finnish carpenter. I, di I didn't mean where you came from, your nationality. <laughs> I meant... Uh, <laughs> so what kind of a carpenter are you? Good, Cadmus. How, how long did you go with, uh, with Merton here before he proposed, Rose? About two weeks. <laughs> is that true, Mike? That is right. Do you remember exactly uh, what you said when you proposed? I said, I planned a trip to Alaska. Will you go with me? <laughs> and was, was she to regard that as a proposal? <laughs> How many proposals did you have before you married Merton, uh, Rose? Four or five. Well, you did pretty well. Why didn't you marry one of the other boys? Well, I had three from him. <laughs> Why didn't you grab him the first time he proposed? I did, but he pretended he didn't hear me. <laughs> now, how did you meet Merton? At his first wedding. <laughs> Uh, you see, his brother was my sweetheart. And we went to the wedding, and um, Everett and I took Merton and Laura in a 1910 Rambler up to Estes Park for their honeymoon. <laughs> well, I've been on honeymoon twice. <laughs> Then I married his brother in 1914. Um, mm -hmm. What was there about Merton that attracted you most? Uh, do you remember? His was name. You... Merton? No, Bedford. My name was uh, Rose Bell Bedford. I see. And you just married him so you wouldn't have to change names? Is that <laughs> yes. I, well, uh, that had something to do with it. <laughs> and now I'd like to ask you a question. May I? <laughs> I've never had a rambler, if that's what you're getting away with. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, I'll answer anything now, within reason. Now, this is a problem that has been presented to my children by me marrying Merton. If their mother marries their uncle, then she becomes their aunt. <laughs> and they become their own cousins. <laughs> but he becomes their stepfather. So well, they are their own step brothers and sisters. Yeah. <laughs> now, will eventually they become their own grandpa and grandma? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Do you want to go through that again, Rose? <laughs> My, my, I, I think since he's a carpenter and you're, they're all stepchildren, he can fix the steps, I think. <laughs> Has anything embarrassing ever, thing ever happened to you, uh, Martin? Yes. As a coach for the girls' basketball team... You <laughs> a coach? I was coach. We had a practice in the gymnasium. I was the only man present. I was standing in the center holding the ball for the jump-up. Something out of my line of vision happened. And all the girls turned, blushing away. I daresn't look back. <laughs> by and by, the girls came back, and later I saw one of the girls had lost her bloomers. <laughs> what was the score then, do you remember? <laughs> I'm a sportsman at heart. That's the only thing. <laughs> well, you seem like a very happy couple, and I wish you a long and smooth voyage on the sea of matrimony. Now, just watch out for a tidal wave, about five pounds per ounce. Huh? <laughs> now, in just a minute, you're going to have a chance to make $2,000 in real cash. I don't know what other kind. <laughs> Friends, you know, it really pays to do business with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. For every one of these dealers from coast to coast has an assignment that means service to you. A dealer's creed, if you like. And it's carried out by each and every person you'll meet at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. From the skilled mechanics in the shop to the folks in the showroom. That assignment is to deal with you fairly and squarely at all times. To give you the quickest possible service and to charge you a reasonable amount whether it be for a routine checkup or a difficult repair job. For the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers believe in one policy above all others, that the customer's wants come first. That's why you can count on friendly courtesy and genuine consideration whenever you visit an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. <laughs> Let's see if a pair of newlyweds will get a chance at the $2,000. Send them and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected important cities of the world as your category. Is that right? All of these cities are over half a million in population. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Now, Rose? Five. In what country is the city of Lisbon? Uh, Portugal. Portugal is correct. <laughs> They're on their way, Groucho. They have $25. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the 25 are you going to try? Ten. All right. In what country is the city of Nagoya? N-A-G-O-Y-A. India. Is that the answer you two agree no, upon? No, I think it was in uh, Spain. No, no, I, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> Japan. That's a tough one. They now have $15. How much of the 15 will you try? Two and a half. In what country is the city of Lyons? L-Y-O-N-S. Switzerland. Do you agree with that? France. Do you agree which, uh, now which, oh, which one do you want? Huh? France. France is correct, huh? <laughs> well, the way again, they have seventeen fifty. I had a squeeze. seventeen fifty, huh? <laughs> Why, you can get a suit with three pair of pants for that. Huh? <laughs> Here we go. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the seventeen fifty are you going to try? Ten dollars again. Ten dollars. In what country is the city of Zurich? Z u r i c h. Switzerland. Yeah, you're right. It's Switzerland, huh? Well, they wind up with twenty-seven dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> now, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, stick around. You can still be high for the night and get a crack at the two thousand dollars. Groucho, the secret word is still air. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a married man and a girl who works in a supermarket. And here they are, Miss Helen Noyes and Mr. Burke Cox. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says that a soda Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss, uh, Miss Helen Noyes, is that right? Uh, where, you, where are you from, uh, Helen? I'm from Ralph's grocery store in Burbank. You were born in a supermarket? <laughs> I, thought, I thought supermarkets didn't make deliveries anymore. 
Are, are you married? No. You're, you're, you're the married man, eh? But, uh, yes. Mr. Cox, uh, where, where are you from? Uh, right across from Covington, Kentucky. I was born. In Ohio, eh? Raised in Kentucky. Some people out there have been flooded by the Ohio River, and they want to... <laughs> how, do, how did you meet your wife, Mr. Cox? Back in the sidewalks in New York, back there in Buffalo, New York, and I was coming out of the restaurant. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're on the sidewalks in New York, back in Buffalo, New York? <laughs> well, I just happened there, and I was coming out of a restaurant. It was very, very cold, and it was the streets were all icy, and the sidewalks icy, and as I came out, she'd come in. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, and we both went flat, and... She said, where you come from? And I said, I come from Kentucky. Where did you come from? She said, oh, you did, did you? Wham. <laughs> she didn't like Happy she Chandler, said, I guess. I come from Scotland. I come from Scotland. Well, I finally you slid her over. Scotland, to Buffalo, the Ohio River, and Kentucky. <laughs> well, it was kind of like... You said he touched all the bases, but... <laughs> okay, anyhow, now you're in Buffalo, flat on the sidewalk. Huh? Scotland is cool. I finally got her on her feet. I spent her over the telephone phone and lifted her up and... What, uh, what was that? <laughs> I spent her over the telegraph phone, got a hold of it and grabbed her hand and we got up. Oh. And then uh, I said, uh, well, let's go in and And then you had a Western it. Union, was that it? Uh, <laughs> the telegraph phone? Yeah, I... you get married in the East. I was only noticing her blue eyes, her dark hair and her red lips and I wasn't thinking of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go along with you on that. <laughs> Well, go on, you may fire when ready. I, I took her a buggy you ride. You took her for a buggy ride? The next day, she said she'd Well, what became of the Rambler, huh? Oh, <laughs> not, not oh no, that was another couple. <laughs> <laughs> this is really the Department of Utter Confusion here. Niagara Falls, we took a buggy ride. You took a buggy ride over Niagara Falls? <laughs> <laughs> driving this horse, my hand got cold, and I kind of slid it up her sleeve a little bit to keep warm. She asked me to... And she said, I'm going to have a in one finger, and I'll take it home mended. And just jokingly, I said, do you mend my, my gloves, and I'll buy yours. And she took it seriously. She said, well, wouldn't that be romantic? We could get married right in Niagara Falls. <laughs> and I said, well, I wasn't quite prepared. I haven't been saving much. She said, you don't need any money to get married. I said, well, anyhow, uh, I haven't got a ring and anything now. Look in her hand was a ring, her mother's ring that she had with her. <laughs> I said, well, he said he came well equipped, this gal. <laughs> we're going to Buffalo and then we'll come back tomorrow. He probably tomorrow. even provided the telegraph pole. <laughs> then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll get married. She said, I have my purse with me. And she paid the hotel bill and the preacher five hours. And she's been taking care of me ever, ever since like that. Nearly 50 years. Very happy. Well, I think you ought to take a deep bow to the audience and I think you ought to get a big round of applause. Huh? Anybody can start off a marriage, flop down the sidewalk, and then stay married 50 years. <laughs> all the credit in the world, huh? Now, uh, what do you do in a supermarket, uh, Miss Noyes? I almost forgot about you, as charming as you look, huh? I'm a checker. You're a checker, huh? No wonder the boys in the firehouse like to play uh, checkers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Buffalo and fall on the sidewalk, huh? <laughs> I don't want to appear uh, particularly stupid, uh, Miss Noyes, but just what is a checker? Well, I... Check the prices. I'm a cashier. Oh, you're the cashier, huh? Now it begins to register. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. What do you do? Huh? Well, seriously, I, I check the prices, ring up the things on the register, and see that the things are properly bagged. How do you mean you properly bag the groceries? Is there more than one way to uh, <laughs> well, yes. bag the groceries? Huh? Sure, you have to put all the canned goods on the bottom and the soft things on the top. I don't know why you bother. When I get home, the soft things are always on the bottom anyway. <laughs> Do you, do you have to know all the prices, Miss Noyes? Uh, no. That's too bad. They live next door to me, and they're very nice people, the prices. <laughs> now, tell me, what artichokes go in the top of the sack or the bottom? On the top. You're just checking the checker, that's all. <laughs> now, Mr. Cox, I don't mean to be ignoring you, but I can't think of anything better to do at the moment. <laughs> do you ever do any, any shopping for your family, but... Mm, not much. Do you know the prices? No. Nobody seems to know the prices. Eh? They're a very nice couple. <laughs> Although I must admit, they stay pretty high most of the time. <laughs> well, if you don't know the prices, how can you sure you're not being cheated, Bert? I'm not. A gullible mm. fellow, isn't he? Eh? <laughs> Miss uh, Noise, how can he be sure he's not being cheated? Eh? He can always check his sales slip. How do you know he wears one? <laughs> 
<laughs> now, where would you put tomatoes on the top or the bottom? <laughs> well, you're fired. I was speaking of canned tomatoes. <laughs> Well, now that my shopping is all done and I haven't got a dime in my pocket, let's see if you two will get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but George Fenneman is offstage to remind our listeners. The newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Bedford, won $27.50. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous discoveries and inventions as your category. Now, you have $20. How much are you going to try at the $20? Five. Okay. Who discovered the law of gravity? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Sir Isaac Newton. Well, now you've got $15. Remember, you're going for 2000 That's the big money, anyhow. Now, how much of the 15 are you going to try? Five. Who perfected the first electric telegraph? Marconi. No, no. That's an Italian dish. No, this was... Um, <laughs> no, this was Morse. You know, you only got $10. Now, how much of the $10 are you going to try? $2. $2? Okay. Who discovered radium? You got a oh, he's got right a talk. Yes. Oh, who is it? Yes. No, I don't know. Wait you don't know? It's a good thing you only bet $2. Well, huh? I think Newton. Madam Curie. Huh? Madam Curie. Madam Curie is right. Well, we're on the way again. <laughs> now they have $12. Now, is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the, tri uh, how much of the 12 will you try? Shoot, 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 the, shoot the works? 12? 12, 12 or 10? 12. 12. Okay. Yeah. Who advanced the theory of relativity? Einstein. Einstein. I, Albert Einstein. Now well, they wind up with twenty-four dollars. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Well, our last couple will be out here in a moment, and then we know who gets the chance at the two thousand dollars. George, who's ahead so far? Well, the newlyweds are leading with twenty-seven dollars and fifty cents. And Groucho, the secret word is still air. We invited some brownie troop leaders and some public school officials to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Rosalie Jackman and Mr. David Bilovsky. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, kid. And uh, if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he gets a hundred bucks instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. <laughs> Jackman? Yes. Very pretty girl, Mrs. Oh, Jackman. You. You're the brownie troop uh, leader? That's right. What, what is a brownie? One of those chocolate nut fudge squares you buy? <laughs> no. You get in the bakery, yeah? Uh, brownie's a little girl. A little girl scout. Uh, how long have you been married? Eight and a half years. I thought you were about 21 years old. Oh, huh? thanks. Oh, it's nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any children? Yes, I have two. Two you girls. You have two. I bet they're beautiful, too, aren't they? Well, we think they're kind of cute. <laughs> Do they like brownies, too? They, too? Uh, yes, one's a brownie, and she loves it. What, what does your husband do? Uh, He's a tool inspector from Manasco. They make airplanes. <laughs> well, you said something, and you win $100 for that, huh? What did I say? Are you waving to your husband? Yes, You ought to be a... What a nerve yeah. you've got of me flirting with you here all doing this thing. You just said air, and that's the secret word tonight, so you win $100 in cash. Oh, compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. <laughs> now, now, let's, let's, get, let's get back to business, huh? Mr. Belovsky, you're from the public schools? That's right, Groucho. And uh, uh, how, how old are you? 30. Well, you, you'd be in about the seventh grade in school now, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, judging from my experience. <laughs> just what do, you, what do you do in school, huh? Assistant supervisor of attendance in the city school. Oh, you supervise the attendance, huh? Why I do the attendants need supervising? <laughs> I don't supervise the attendance. I supervise the attendance. <laughs> well, why do you say so? Huh? <laughs> would you would you be a vice to amplifying that, uh, Mr. Belovsky? I'm the uh, liaison man, say, between the school and the home. Well, you can. I don't know what you mean. But... <laughs> I'm the uh, the one they send out when they try to find out why a child is not in school. You're the contact between the home and the school, is that That's it? Right. You, in other words, you drive a bus, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were a truant officer. <laughs> we don't call it that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, we had other names for them, too. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's the difference between an old-style truant officer and an assistant supervisor of attendance? And don't say the spelling. <laughs> well, it's a matter of approach. Today we try to find out why a child is not in school rather than just grabbing him by the seat of his Steady pants. now, steady. <laughs> and drag him into school. Uh-huh. In other words, you try to find the reason they play hooky. Is that right? Right. Well, I can tell you the reason. You know. <laughs> they hate school. <laughs> You must have some interesting stories about your job, Mr. Bozlovsky. Uh, could you uh, give us one? Well, I remember a time when I visited a home and asked for a mother of a boy. I've done that, too. Uh... <laughs> Before I knew what was happening, I was helping in the delivery of a child. They had expe expected the doctor. And you expected that kid uh, to be in school? <laughs> Certainly grabbing him at a young age. <laughs> and what happened? The doctor arrived. <laughs> so did the baby. Now, how are your brownies, Mrs. Jackman? <laughs> are, th are they done yet? Oh, they're, they're fine. <laughs> and while as a brownie troop leader, you get pretty good pay, I presume, huh? <laughs> no, I do it just for the fun of it. Well, couldn't you have fun and get paid, too? <laughs> well, that'd be nice. <laughs> what, are, what are your duties as a... I'll call you Rosalie, huh? Sure, that's well. Your husband turned around the other way for a while. <laughs> Weeks like these, a nickel a week. And I buy the handcraft materials and mm -hmm. oh, just all kinds of things. How many girls do you supervise? Huh? I have about 13 now. 18 girls at a nickel a week? That's 90 cents. That's not hay, you know. <laughs> Pretty near hay, but it's not hay. <laughs> Do you teach the youngsters anything about scouting? Oh, yes, we take them on cookout. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Mine is out on Thursdays. Huh? <laughs> I'm with a hangover Friday, huh? Uh, <laughs> we take them out to a park or where they can have a barbecue or a fire. And, and, and then what do you do? Then you call the roll? Huh? Oh, yes, we always call the roll. You cook the roll with the brownies? <laughs> <or> <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's a very worthwhile organization. There ought to be more organizations like that. It huh? certainly is. I'd like to join, too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get back to you, Mr. Belovsky. Uh, pretend I'm a high school boy and I'm not in school, and you run into me in Sam's pool room. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's your cue. Now, uh, find out what's wrong, huh? Hello, Groucho. What are you doing uh, here? How do you do, Mr. Belovsky? Uh, how do you do, Groucho? How do you do, Mr. Belovsky? <laughs> If we keep saying that, you'll never find out what I'm doing in the pool. It's only fifth period now. You should be in geometry class now. I'll play the six ball on the side, huh? <laughs> now, what'll happen if I don't go back to school? Well, if you don't go to school, Groucho, you'll be a shiftless uh, ne'er-do-well, or maybe even worse. <laughs> That's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Well, I must say, it's been very educational having you two here tonight, and people like you who devote their lives to youngsters are doing an important job for the community. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto-Plymouth game, you bet your life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The newlyweds are still ahead with $27.50. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected Latin songs as your category. Is that correct? Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you risk? Hmm. What's the name of this Latin song? Play, Jerry. Stephanie. Stephanie. And it on the way with $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? 20. Jerry Fielding will play. You identify this song. Brazil is right. And now we have $50. Listen, you're not spending all your time with those brownies. You wouldn't know that. <laughs> okay, you got 50. How much are you going to try? 40, I guess. Okay, give me the title of this song. Amapola. Amapola. Sarah Kleiman with $90 now. 
What a silly name, Emma Pollock. Isn't that a silly name for a song? <laughs> All right, you got $90. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? 40 What's the title of this Latin melody? Green Eyes! And they wind up with a total of $130. And that means that they get the chance at the DeSoto Play of $2,000 question. Do you know what makes it possible for a car owner to get really expert service at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's? Well, for one thing, the training their service mechanics get. Factory training. Not just when they first go to work for a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, but constant training to keep them up on the new service and maintenance methods that are constantly coming out of the factory. And it's important for all you car owners to get this expert service at a fair price. That's why it pays to go to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, whether it's an emergency or a routine checkup. So for the best from your car, Drive in where you get the best service at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the Brownie troop leader and the school official, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, Groucho. Well, that's a lot of money. You can buy a lot of brownies for that, huh? <laughs> Here we go for $2,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The last emperor to rule on the North American continent was driven from his throne in 1867. Who was this last emperor in North America? <laughs> What's the answer you two have decided upon? What is it? No, I'm sorry. It's Emperor Maximilian. Same thing. He was driven from his throne in Mexico by Benito Juarez. Sure. That was a tough one. I'm sorry. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $130 in the quiz plus $100 for saying the secret word. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget... Next week, the big question will be worth $2,500. Well, it's almost time for Bingo the Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Remember, you can't stop quick when streets are slick. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.